Hello, hi. I'm Dirk Daner, president and co-founder of Tama Finland Foundation. And I have here today one of our artists in residency. And your name is Jonathan David Smith. That's me. And uh, this is sort of the closure of your time here at Tama. Yeah, this is, this is the exit interview, which is melancholic. Melancholic, so, mixture of emotions. You shared something with me, which uh, um, family is is a big thing for you. Mm -hmm. and, said, and, and that uh, you've really, uh, and I want to acknowledge that you really stepped up and really put yourself out there to uh, to make friends, mm -hmm. and uh, and it worked. And you were a great ambassador, have been a great ambassador for the house and that uh, you welcome people and uh, mm. and I do appreciate that because uh, we can't all do it all the time you know thank you that's nice to hear you know I said to my mom yesterday and she said it's the Northern Irish coming out of you that's what she said so um, you're from Ireland yes yeah and uh, when did you uh, migrate to the United States 2012 so almost almost 12 years ago uh, and initially, the reason for that was because I moved to New York to do my master's degree in photography and I went to Parsons. So, as far as, how do you identify as an artist in that do you feel it's important to have uh, mediums that you're associated with or is it like an open book that you will do any medium yeah well i don't i don't do every medium but i have done more than one medium photography i always come back to because that is what uh, i was trained to do from 16 it was photography and moving image so everything kind of usually s starts there but i've done performances i've done i've made a documentary i've done lots of writing yeah so the written word is mm -hmm. is something that is uh, important yeah, uh, when I was when I was five, my school teacher held up my book um, as a reference point to the class oh, wow. about how not to write. Oh. And this was huge wow. handwriting, right? And so I always remember that. Wow. Um, but I also think we're losing handwriting. There's lots lots of uh, communicative ways that we're kind of we're sort of. Uh, we're sort of losing that. We're getting a bit lazier, I think, with internet. And I don't think that people um, write letters right. by hand anymore. So for me, it's a way, I just like writing, but then it's also a way to, you know, it makes it makes the work have more character um, and people, you know, can gravitate towards it, you know, if they're, if they're into the handwritten words. But then also, I've just always written, and I still do. So, during this time, have you been writing? Yeah, I. so when I was a kid, I used to write um, little, uh, I would tear off uh, pages from magazines and write little, like if I heard like um, an advertisement, I liked the sound of a word, or a word someone was saying, or a saying someone was, was saying that I'd heard it over, and I just liked the sound of it, I would write it down. I'd shove it in my school bag, in the front of my school bag, and then I would have all these like little bits of paper. So when I got older and I had a notepad, I just started doing that in a notepad. And so I, you've been I, doing I, that during your time here? Yeah, and I also do it on my phone. I just write down on my phone, you know, if I don't have pen and paper, and it goes into, um, initially that was, I used to text myself years ago before we could sort of have you know, like the apps that yeah. we have now, but now we have the apps. So I it, I would say it's 50-50, I handwrite, and then I also do the, the phone, yeah. Behind us, uh, you have uh, uh, your art that uh, you put on sort of banner flags. Yeah. And uh, and also up here, uh, you have t uh, sweatshirt and is this a this is a different book is it no that's the same book but it's just a photograph from the book i see yeah so all of these photographs in this book um 
were taken before I came to the Tonghas. This was my previous project. And this was something that just coincided while I was here, the release of this book. Oh, book. Yeah. And so it's available, how do people buy it? You can buy it from my website, jonathandivitsmith.com, and you can buy it from Amazon and Barnes and Noble, all the big ones. Uh -huh. um, and you can just search from Jonathan David Smith and the book is called Now That You've Gone and Come Back. And it's available all over the world. So you've been here for three months mm -hmm. and uh, I watched uh, the beginning was uh, you were just sort of looking and searching and then you sort of got your groove mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you started uh, having models mm -hmm. and photographing and uh, I was one of your models because yes. you, uh, decided to have this uh, experience of documenting um, the people who live, work here, and uh, come here. Yeah. That was really important, you know, that, so what struck me when I first came here was, you know, friendly people, right? Being invited in, and being queer, and all of the things that I think people know about the Tom House. But then also this kind of you know, in-house community that extends outside of the house with with people coming and going every day, mm -hmm. people that work here that don't live here, but that are here every day, the volunteers, and then the people that do live here all the time, like yourself and, and Sharp. Um, and so that to me was a family that I wanted to photograph. And I wanted, I love a, I love a posse. Mm -hmm. I came from a posse, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I, a foster family and in the best way, this is what this house reminded me of. It reminded me of the best part of being in a foster family, which was people from different backgrounds, different cultures, um, coming together and being, and living together yes. and, and, and being a group. Yeah. So that was very much kind of my, what I wanted to capture. And how soon and the house too the house itself was did it take you a month uh, before you sort of got that uh, mm. I don't know I can't really remember I think it was three I think it was three weeks uh -huh. or four weeks yeah because I started with Tom's writing I, I read through some of his correspondence because honestly that's that's what I do with every project I kind of I just look stuff up and read and and so I wanted to start with him because he was so important to the house and and, and you know he kind of um, is here you know watching over everyone so I wanted to start there and to see if I could get something from him and what I what I got was like a sense of humor actually mm, that yes. I didn't anticipate you right. know like I and it made because I was I was nervous about what I was going to do because I've never done erotic work before. So that that was that was nerve wracking. The idea of that I did I, I felt pressure. But then once I read Tom's correspondence and I got to know the house a little bit better and the people in it, then it helped towards me deciding to photograph these people. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's I think it was very special for them. A lot of yeah well you to know be the, the source of the subject matter yeah and I I think everyone should have their moment yes you know and then, and then that's why they ended up being on flags because I wanted to celebrate everyone and the window decals that we don't see here um, the photographs that are embedded in the in the window panes downstairs that was another reason why I put those in there because um, I wanted them to be, I wanted those people to be looked at, illuminated. Um, and then also, uh, everyone is an intrin intrinsical part of the house. So then to put the work, um, to have it embedded sort of in the house, like these flags are like hanging from the property. Mm -hmm. and that to me was kind of, that was really important to show. Um, in the final presentation, I wanted the house to be, I wanted it to be a site specific uh, experience. And yeah. so when you had your reception, mm -hmm. um, did people, uh, you uh, walked around and, and spoke about the works? Yeah, and, and people asked, people asked and some of the models were there. 
um, most of them were there and we did a map we did we did like a physical printed out map where it was like an easter egg hunt and mm. i think people really appreciated that because it made it a bit more fun because this house the grounds of this house are quite large yes so and not everyone knows what sort of down beyond right yeah so that was fun to do that um yeah and, and everyone so where what's the next in regards to uh your uh, your projects I want this, the work on the flags, to be, and the Wonder Decal to be a book. I think that it deserves to be a book. I think that I've managed to, I've luckily managed to create enough work that can be a book. Mm -hmm. And next year is the 40th anniversary of the Thomas Inland Foundation. And yes. I think it's such a great opportunity then for me to put out a book to honor that. And I really, I really want to do that. Yeah. That so sounds I, great. I think that's what's next. Have you shared that with Richie? Yes. Good. Yes. Yeah. He likes the idea. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you're going to be participating in our Art and Culture Festival this mm. coming week. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, what will you be showcasing? Your photography in print form or? So it's going to be a little medley of everything. Um, the apparel that's hanging up here is just brand new. Uh, I just did those this week. There's going to be more apparel. These are related to my recent book. And then there will be some apparel that features the new work that I shot here at the Tom House. And of course, you'll be able to buy my book and you'll be able to buy some signed prints, mm -hmm. photographic prints. and. I'm just looking forward to joining and being there and yes. seeing what everyone else is up to as yes. well. Yeah. And the community. The community. And then I'm also on the panel with four other past artists in residence, which is going to be really fun. I've never wow. done that before. I've never been on a panel before. No? My first time. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to so that. So it, it goes very easy in that uh, people will just, uh, you don't talk over each other, but uh, it, it comes out and it flows pretty pretty smoothly. Yeah, I just, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about liking being in a group situation. Like, I just, I just think it's fun to share with other people and get other people's point of views. And and then, you know, be part of this extended family forever. Like, I feel like this That's is like- That's your choice. Yeah, this is, yeah. this is kind of forever. Yes. Um, which I love, you know, and it's such, I feel, I feel really lucky to have had that. And to and you know to take that with me. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and it's now part of your adult life. Yeah. Even though you're still young. I'm still young. So, you haven't mentioned uh, the one important figure that. Uh, who is that here in the house? The one important figure. Are you <laughs> Not talking, me. You're talking about Pearl the cat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pearl the cat. She is the queen of the castle. Yeah. Yeah. And you see that you get it, right? Yeah. And and uh it's it's actually it's really funny because uh everyone ends up meeting her and having a relationship with her. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I've enjoyed having a cat again. Yeah. So if you had to um make a, a statement about uh about the Tom House and the residency program. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would you, uh, what would you say? Life changing, honestly, for me, life, yeah. cha life changing. Um, for me, it came at the right time in my life. Yes, I think it's dependent on the person and where they're at. You know, it's different for different people, but this has been really life changing for me, and I've made friends that. I think I you think, were I think visiting I Stuart yeah, Sanford. Visiting Stuart Sanford, yeah. who I've known for a long time, yeah. um, and did not know what was about to happen, which was me starting this residency. So um, I feel like it came at the right time. It was really good for me as a new resident to LA to experience um, that through the house, to be a new person but to have the support of the house and to go to events and go, to go to 
clubs and yes. restaurants and, yeah. and have and have company, really good company and uh, and also everywhere I've went and everyone that I've talked to have it's very prestigious. It holds a lot of weight when I tell them that I'm an artist in residence at the Tom Finland Foundation. Yes. And, and I'm really proud to say that. It's yeah. good. So is there anything you want to say to your viewing public? I want to encourage um, anyone, anyone to come to the house and to uh, experience the house if, if you haven't already. They can come on a tour? They can come on a tour. They can uh, go to an event like the one we're having at the, at the Soho Warehouse this coming weekend with mm -hmm. the festival. Um, they can donate, they can become a member. Um, and You're an ambassador the, already. Yeah, and, and I just think that as popular as the Tom House is, I think that um, there's always room for more people. Yeah. And there is. There is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what I would tell people to. I would tell people to just make time to come if they haven't already. Thank you for your gift of the spanky and her dang. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Yes. You like it? Are yes. you going to read it? Yes. Yeah. Are In you, my free time. Are you a reader? Yes. Yeah. Me too. But yeah, me too. I come and go. Yeah. I'm a writer too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're amazing. Jonathan, thank yes. you so much. And uh, we'll be looking for uh, what's around the corner with you. Yes, and you will not have to look very far because I will not be very far. That's good. Okay. All right. I love you. Mm.